Uh, there we go. Okay. Nice. So, Disney Plus went live last month in November. Yep. And with it came all the Star Wars content, which... Uh, almost all. Almost? Is it missing some? Yeah. So, like, the um, the uh, holiday seasonal one where oh. the Wookiees... No, but, but you, you said all that? Star Wars. That is incorrect. Is not have all <laughs> Star Wars content. That's not even canon anymore, is it? Is that still canon? No. Because, no? I mean... Who cares? Yeah, okay. So, see, <laughs> Disney, they gave the axe to all the... Um, Stuff that was not canon. So they they released everything that I believe they still want to be canon, which includes like the cartoons, um, Clone Wars. I actually haven't seen Clone Wars, but I've heard it's really started. good. Do you you did start it? Is it pretty good? Yeah, I've um it's really slow. There's good episodes. Um, I'm looking for someone to put out a good filler list because I don't really care about the filler. I just want like huge Star Wars books. I just want the story. Like I know that Darth Maul. Is in there somewhere. I know. I don't want to give any spoilers. He's in there somewhere, and I want to see that. And I know that those too. episodes. Yeah. And like, there's a bounty hunter trilogy that I'm really looking forward to. I just need to find someone that put out something on the internet that has a good filler list. I found one, but it's not a very good one. So just that's what I'm looking for. I don't watch fillers. Yeah, and I'll probably start at some point too. Right now, however, I am wrapped up completely in the newest Star Wars uh, show that Disney released, which. Just by the way, I was going to throw out there, if you're a Star Wars fan, it's totally worth buying Disney+, Plus at least right now. Uh, Verizon, if you have Verizon, you also get it for free for a year. Oh, that's good info. That's good info. By the way, if you know uh, an episode list where he could skip, you know, fillers, let him know for Clone Wars, uh, in the comments. We'd love that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, The Mandalorian, right? It's out. Yes. It is awesome. One of the best pieces of Star Wars content if it, it honestly to probably come out since the main trilogy. Well, probably, yeah. Uh, minus, like I said, Rebels and stuff. Some of the cartoons have uh, raving reviews um, from fans. But it's I would say, first season, though. definitely the best thing that has been put out by Disney since they bought the IP. Oh, Hands yeah. down. Um, and we'll get into some other stuff with the upcoming movie, The Train Wreck, that that's going to be uh, later this month. It's just, yep. it's looking horrible. But uh, The Mandalorian's out. It's awesome. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's actually written or, or directed by John Favreau, which is the same guy that directed Iron Man. One. Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. So they're bringing, they brought him on board. He definitely knows what he's doing. You could definitely tell the difference between him, J.J. Abrams, and... Uh, Ryan Johnson. Bro, oh God, yeah. <laughs> guy who just, I solely believe... Who must not him be and named. Kathleen Kennedy just wanted to destroy... The entire Star Wars legacy. But anyways. Mandalorian. He, yeah, the Mandalorian <laughs> is doing great so far. Um, the most recent episode was so directed far. by Bryce Dallas Howard. It was her directorial debut. Mm -hmm. uh, that episode was amazing. No spoilers. Which, I don't know if you know this. So she took, so uh, Favreau, she basically just followed him, him around. He gave her a lot of really good advice. But this being her first, like, actual debut. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's a huge IP. I mean, yes, Bryce Dallas Howard, she's been in the industry for a while, but she has no credentials there's when it comes of, to directing. A lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of pressure. Lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot and of that's, pressure. That's the person that in um, Black Mirror, right? She acted in Black Mirror. She did she, the, she was in Jurassic World and a yeah, few she, other things. Yeah, yeah. She was in Black, I think, pretty sure she was in Black Mirror with the, uh, um, the rating episode where you rated people. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure she was the... The actress in that. I so love she's that done show. some acting. So she's she's been in the scene, but for her first acting on a huge IP, fantastic. For for directing, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, directing. I mean, directing is, I mean, it's it's hard. And Star Wars is something, as you can see, is really easy to mess up. But uh, I want to talk a little bit because we're about halfway through, almost over halfway through the season. Uh, we're not gonna talk any spoilers, but what I will say is the series has been really good. But I feel like it's at this point starting to lack direction in that it it was almost a novelty at first to get something so good in Star Wars feeling. But now as the season wears down, for one, the episodes are super short. And for two, there's only eight episodes for this entire season. And I really am struggling to find... The plot. There isn't a lot there's a, of. There isn't an overarching plot. No, yet. there's no. There, the, they what, haven't introduced it. Like he's like we understand that like 
Baby Yoda is going to be part of the story in a big part, but we don't understand why they wanted to take Baby Yoda. I mean, is this whole first season just going to be trying to explain and having subplots and explaining why they took yeah. Baby Yoda? I mean, because they only have four episodes left. They don't have a lot of time to explain where it's going because they're right now they're just making a lot of subplots and a lot of filler episodes. You can't have a lot of filler episodes on a no. on a first season. You know, any good story has to have a conflict. This story set up a conflict, but it was resolved within like the first few episodes. Mm -hmm. Last episode was the first time that we kind of escaped the the main the first planet that he was on, more or less. Um, he actually officially left. Again, not trying to spoil. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. We'll try and do this as spoiler-free as possible. And we're eventually probably going to upload a spoiler uh, version of a review for season one. But uh, what I could say is that, uh, for one, I think that the people who wanted him, there's some speculation that they might be with the cloning facility that was in the prequel trilogy because there is a uh, piece, uh, there's a logo on the scientist guy's shirt with the glasses in that episode that mm -hmm. is the same as the cloning facility. And then uh, the other speculation is that um, he might, so he, who he's cloned from, if he's, if this Yoda character, whatever their name is, their species or name, if it's a clone of somebody that we already know, because this takes place post empire. Yes. Yeah, so this is the downfall of the empire. Yeah. This takes place after uh, return of the Jedi. Right, so it's completely possible. See, people are saying this is this might be Yaddle's baby, Yaddle and Yoda. But see, uh, they were pretty old, and Yoda dies in the original trilogy. And with how young this baby is, I find it unlikely that this is their baby. It seems more likely it's a clone. What's genius is that they took something, Yoda's species, which is really well known. Everyone really loved Yoda, and there's no history about it right there's we don't know we don't even know the name of the species why we have to call it baby yoda yeah we and have to come up with so the what but you know what do you call it the, the thing is is that <laughs> we're in episode four and we haven't hit any of that yet no and and getting back to the conflict there is no conflict so he got a bounty the bounty was fulfilled he uh, no spoilers yeah no no spoilers <laughs> he got a bounty bounty was fulfilled there's some betrayal that happens and he goes off on an adventure. And I was telling Barky that it's almost like, at this point, just uh, the Mandalorian and the baby is what they should have called it. <laughs> what what crazy shenanigans will they get into this week, you know? Space babies. Yeah. <laughs> space. <laughs> the Mandalorian and the space baby. <laughs> That's what we'll call him, space baby. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, space baby's cool, but there's no, um, we need a big baddie. And they keep bringing in, like, these nothing bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the last episode, uh, I thought that maybe we were going to see, like, Baby Yoda get hurt or something. There was somebody that came up and was, you know, going to snipe them. And then two seconds dead. You didn't even find out who they were. So we need, we need conflict. Otherwise, people are going to lose interest now, in the show. The issue is, is, yes, they need a big baddie, but you also need a big baddie that's very interesting and good and the issue is is that during this time in star wars there's a void it's let's be honest there's, there's yeah, a it's, void it's not it's a hard thing to do just because and you can't bring in sith you can't bring in jedi because there's no there's no more jedi the sith are on the deck they're now the well, sith were already pretty much extinct right both jedi and sith and now you killed darth vader's dead one of the only sith sidious is dead no there's yet yeah, Sidious is, Whatever. see, that's the thing. He's whatever. He's whatever. Sidious <laughs> isn't dead. <laughs> Star Wars, care. that freaking mouse over at Disney doing the weirdest crap. He waves his wand. Boof, you're alive. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe we'll see Snoke. I maybe, did not know maybe that John give him Favreau some... also did the Lion King remake. Yeah. Yeah, John Favreau's been doing amazing work. Uh, although I heard that movie good. wasn't that good. It was good. It was just that, oh, anyways, it was pretty good. So... Uh, in conjunction with that, we're going to kind of segue over into talking about the space baby phenomenon, meme lord himself, all over the internet and everybody's memes, Baby Yoda, aka Space Baby. I have shared a stupid amount of space Oh my baby gosh. Memes. And everybody is going nuts. Now, here's where the story and where the interesting piece 
of information comes in. Apparently, uh, Disney did noopsie. <laughs> Disney bet. did not think about the fact that people might find this face cute and adorable and want merchandise during the holiday season. And if you haven't seen <laughs> the, um, if you haven't actually seen the merchandise, uh, oh, we'll go ahead. And, we'll go ahead and uh, pl once we, you know, do post production, we'll plug in. What we'll those put some actually, in, like we'll up actually, here or something. The, yeah, we'll put those over. Or maybe, maybe, maybe over, over here. here somewhere. Yeah, over there. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know where I'm pointing. We'll um, put some in over there. But yeah, just so you guys can see it, it's god awful. It's, it's so bad. It, it, I, I could have done. Yeah, you could've I could have done better. I could have drawn a stick figure on a shirt, and it would have been better. <laughs> like, let's be real. Just use some of the memes. Uh, but anyway, so people have been freaking out. Like, you know, and this is Disney. This isn't some small company. And one thing I will say is one of the major reasons you buy an IP and spend as much money as Disney did merch. is the, yeah, on, on Star Wars is the merch. You make so much money with the merch. I don't understand how they fail. This has to be intentional. If it's not, shame on you, Disney. Kathleen Kennedy, it, this is for, horrible. For example, um, The Last Jedi, or no, is uh, Force Awakens, before when that came out, Porgs were out before the movie came out. Yeah, we had pork they plushies did. that were came out before the movie came out, and you're telling me if the Mandalorian came out, they looked at this <laughs> cute little thing and was just like, "Nah, it's not gonna hit. I think it's gonna be. I don't think people are gonna buy into it." No, that's. What? I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it for two seconds. I feel like it might have been a publicity stunt that they might have something in the works, which blah blah brings us to an article by Screen Rant, which came out on the second of December. Talking about the fact that uh, it's an understatement to say the Baby Yoda is a standout from The Mandalorian. The John Favreau created series is good thus far and most people seem to like it. However, everyone is totally obsessed with the adorable infant. Obviously, like we said, there's been no merch, which by the way, I thought a Furby would be a, a cool merch idea. That would be really cool. Again, fail. But recently, there is a shred of light coming through the gaping hole of desire, which is on Twitter, the official Funko account shared a GIF of Baby Yoda uh, sipping from his cup of soup in the Mandalorian's fourth episode, which was cute as heck, uh, from the Sanctuary episode. Uh, Reddit user BigDaddyCool96 shared several Baby Yoda Funko Pops from Target's system. The one that they show here is a 10-inch figure. Potentially speculated it could be a $30, $29.99, $30 variant and a smaller counterpart. So this is good. I'm I'm, really I'm excited. I'm excited that, yeah, that. I, I will probably pick one up. I do wish, though, he was holding his cup of coffee. Yeah, like sipping I it. I would have loved that more <laughs> than that, but I would take this. This is definitely probably the best merch that's out there unless you go to Etsy and do, I am sure some people have done some really cool stuff. But this pop figure, I'm not a pop I'm not person. A I don't collector. I don't collect yeah. them, but I will buy this. Right. It's a must. I mean, it's the first good piece of merch they come out with. Star Wars stuff tends to become pretty collectible over time, too. So who knows? Maybe I'll pick up two. I really, really hope though that this isn't, you know, fake. I hope it's legit and we finally get some good baby Yoda. Come on. We need space baby merch in our life. Um so yeah, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is kind of a, a change of pace here. So with all this Star Wars talk, we have the release of The Rise of Skywalker coming out on December 20th. And I kind of feel like that as bad as it is, I'm seeing and hearing more about The Mandalorian than I am about the upcoming movie. And I saw a few interviews, um, like they had John Boyega. Uh, who plays Finn on uh, Jimmy Fallon recently. And um, we had J.J. Abrams start doing some interviews where he was talking about the movie. But all the press that I've heard about this so far, uh, for one, has failed with test audiences numerous times to the point that audiences have walked out. They said that uh, they brought in George Lucas to consult and then threw out 90% of the scene that he shot. Uh, and then to make matters worse, um, I have, he has not, but I, so I'm not going to say any spoil, potential spoilers here, but I have been listening to some of the leaks that have been coming through with some of the potential endings. And it is going to be a travesty if they do I mean, some of the things that I'm hearing about. Are we talking worse than Last Jedi? Worse, way worse. 
It's bad. I'll it leave. is bad. I almost, I almost left last Jedi. If we did not go to an IMAX, I might have left last Jedi. We were laughing. Oh yeah, we, 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 we were, were. We were just laughing. Laugh the out time. loud, laughing in the middle of a theater. It was, it was that bad. If you haven't watched it by now, then that's your fault. Yeah. Like when Snoke dies, I literally <laughs> looked at you and I was just like, no. we were so confused. <laughs> or flying Leia, Super Leia. That was so. <laughs> that was, oh my gosh, so oh bad. Man, that was but so uh, th this. This stands to top it. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow this might top it. Uh, but we're we're not hearing a lot about the movie, and I think it's because Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, they aren't confident with what they're producing, and they don't want to build a bunch of hype because if you get everybody to go see it, uh, for one, I don't see Kathleen Kennedy carrying on the franchise after uh, this movie comes up. I think that Disney's going to replace her. I think, personally, John Favreau would be a good replacement for her. Uh, he has the industry knowledge. He has a good track history with Disney, Marvel, and, you know, IPs that are huge in doing them justice. I, I think that Kathleen Kennedy was thrown into the mix at a time when there was a lot of women power uh, going through the public. And everybody felt like, especially in Hollywood, that women weren't being represented. And then she was an advocate for that. However, she just uh, took it too far. How, yeah, well, and she wasn't familiar enough with Star Wars and uh, it shows, right? So uh, that's all I'm going to say. You know, I'm sure we'll have more on real Star quick, Wars. So, or I do want to. So, real quick, with the um, start with the you're saying John Favreau, I want to see what he could do in the Knights of the Old Republic era. That would I, be cool. There would be so much action, so much lightsabers, because that is when the Jedi. That's literally just Jedi territory, yeah. Sith territory, battles, battling against each other. Battles. You had the Jedi Temple, you had the Sith Temple on Coruscant. Um, it would have, or I think Korriban, and then I think the Jedi Temple is on Coruscant. I yeah, have those mixed around because it's very similar, but it's that would be such a, a super amazing. And then I would do want to talk about just very, no spoilers, I just want to like just a couple minutes about the new game because that's also the best the best game to come oh, out the, with the IP yeah. Fallen Order Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order, Order. Yep. came out for P or PC PS4 and Xbox One I believe um and I have absolutely loved it. I know you've played a little bit of it I've played a lot more yeah um, I just started my playthrough I'm doing a playthrough on Twitch uh, you could go watch a video I streamed it last night um I just started my playthrough I got through like the tutorial and so far it's been it, awesome you, it just feels like Star Wars yeah that's the best way to describe it. You the just, scale of the game you seems just huge. Feel like you're in Star Wars. You're playing it. They did a really nice job with Cal. I'm not. I don't. Uh, this is nitpicking. I don't really. I, one thing I also didn't like was um, Cal's facial expressions sometimes throughout the game are a little unbelievable. Um, like exaggerated. For example, like this isn't spoiler, but like you're on the train. And he's talking and at the very beginning. Yeah, and okay. I just don't. I can't believe. Like it doesn't. I think that the I motion capture technology, me. though, and the realism, especially the stormtroopers at the very beginning of the game, <laughs> looked so real. It was uncanny. I felt like I was watching a movie, but I could definitely see what you're talking about. I mean, it's a game. Face technology, though, has come a long way. That's what I'm saying. Way. I'm just nitpicking um, yeah. is basically what I'm doing. But it is. It's a great game. It is amazing. I we need more game. games like that. EA, kudos to you. Single player Single games, player, which they said, oh, single player games aren't going to. Nobody likes single player games. We're not going to make them. Yeah, well, guess what? You were wrong. Single this player games. This, this, this the is month. the month. This is Star Wars month, apparently. They are wrong. No microtransactions. No loot boxes. Uh, we have a good single player, no multiplayer, good single player Star Wars game. Here's the hoping that we get maybe some follow up DLC priced reasonably or possibly a sequel. I don't know. Not a lot has been talked about on that.